Okay, so we met the root test and proved it and saw how similar it was to the ratio test. Um, and it really is just incredibly similar in, in its shape and proof. Um, but let's go ahead and check this sort of indeterminate part of it. That um, there are times where you can apply the ratio test or the root test and get it being inconclusive. That you can get the limit of the nth roots of the absolute value of the nth terms being 1. And the series converges, and you can also find it where the series diverges. And in fact, it's the same example from the ratio test, because these are really so similar. Um, so for example, the harmonic series diverges. Sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n diverges. But if we try to apply the root test to this series, it is sadly um, not able to, to figure this out, because it's it's sort of borderline. The harmonic series diverges, but it takes its sweet time doing so. However, if we apply the root test, the nth term here is 1 over n, so we want to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n, which is just 1 over n. This is sort of a fun indeterminate form question. So an nth root is the 1 over nth power, and so what we're doing is taking the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n to the 1 over n. So this is 0 to the 0 indeterminate form. That um, 0 to the 0 is 1, but in general, raising 0 to um, you know, numbers that are close to 0 raised into powers will want to stay close to 0, so there's something indeterminate going on here. So what we want to do is, as you always, um, as usual, or always, uh, is rewrite this in a way that we can use L'Hopital's rule. So the standard way, of course, is to write this as e to the ln of this. And when I take the natural log of 1 over n to the 1 over nth power, I can pull that power down. And since the exponential function is nice and continuous, I can push this limit through. So this is e raised to the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n times ln of 1 over n. Which is nicer to deal with, right? Because 1 over n is going to 0, and ln of 1 over n is going to um, negative infinity. So we can go ahead and rewrite this as e to the limit as n goes to infinity of ln of 1 over n divided by n. Right, so this numerator here is going to like you're plugging in numbers into the natural log that get closer and closer to zero, so this is going to negative infinity, and the denominator is going to positive infinity, so we can use L'Hopital's rule here. So this is e to the limit as n goes to infinity of the derivatives. Technically, I'm using the connect the dots theorem here. I could say this is the same as the limit as x goes to infinity of ln of 1 over x over x. So we can continue this sort of, we can consider this continuous version of the question. Um, the derivative of ln of 1 over x is going to be, um, well, it's even better is to notice is that this is x to the minus 1, I can pull it to minus 1, this is minus 1 times ln of x, and so the derivative of that is just minus 1 over x and the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. But you get the same thing if you take the derivative of 1 over x directly. You get 1 over 1 over x times the derivative of 1 over x, which is negative x to negative 2, but whatever. Um, in the end, you get limit as x goes to infinity of negative 1 over x, and that's going to go to 0. So you get e to the 0, which is uno. So after, you know, some fun mucking about with a little bit algebra and L'Hopital's rule, you see that the root test sadly is inconclusive.
that the series diverges, but the root test can't tell us that for sure. Um, but the same thing happens if you look at the sum of the reciprocals of squares. So you look at, you know, 1 over n squared sum from 1 to infinity. We know that this converges to, in fact, pi squared over 6. Um, but if you tried to apply the root test to this, you would also see that it's inconclusive. So it shows, again, that when the root test, um, when the limit of the nth roots of the nth terms is 1, that anything can happen. We apply the root test, we'll get the limit as 1. So now our nth term is 1 over n squared, and again we take the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of 1 over n squared, or the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, 1 over n squared to the 1 over n power, which again is e to the ln of this. So we'll go ahead and sort of consider the continuous version of this. So this is um, so 1 over n squared is n to the negative 2, so I can pull out that negative 2. to this power, and I set it switched x's, okay, um, but very similar to as before, once you've sort of gone through the algebra, you get e raised to this limit, and you can apply the Patel's rule here, because ln x goes to infinity as x goes to infinity as x goes to infinity as well, so by the Patel's rule, you get e to the minus 2 over x as x goes to infinity, and that goes to e to the 0 is equal to 1 as well. So a very similar type of argument as before. Um, our sort of test statistic, the limit of the nth roots, is 1. So the root test is inconclusive. So, if you take the limit of the nth roots of the absolute value of the nth term, and you get 1, anything can happen. The series can diverge like the harmonic series, and it can converge like this series, the sum of the reciprocals of squares. Um, and in fact, it's going to be inconclusive for every p-series. But fortunately, we already know when p-series converge by the integral test. So in fact... Um, the root test and the ratio test are inconclusive. For all P series. So as useful as the root test and the ratio test are, you know, there are plenty of natural examples that you should approach in other ways. You should not just default to the root test or the ratio test. Um, so the root test again really has the same failings as the ratio test.